my great pleasure to have Wendy Shane here ready to do a wonderful another DVD for you, our beloved customers. Wendy is the designer for Petite Pochet Patterns. She's a regular contributor to So Beautiful Magazine. She's been teaching for many years at the Martha Pullen School of Art Fashion. And Wendy, thank you for being here doing another wonderful DVD. Martha, I am so excited about being here. My students have been asking me and asking me for weeks and months on end, when are you gonna come out with another DVD? And I said, don't worry, one is in the works. Do you know, Wendy, when you came out with the first two, the heirloom embroidery one and the shadow work embroidery, over and over again, we've had our students and our friends say, oh, Martha, please, when is Wendy gonna do heirloom embroidery two? They said they never understood shadow work until they got your DVD. And Wendy, I think you run, they run you back and forth. <laughs> you know, they can watch the segments over and over again. It's and like they said, having a private lesson. It is, it is. And then they, the Heirloom One came out, and they said, I can now do this. When are we going to have more? So, Wendy, thank you so much for coming here. And to all of you who love Wendy, here is Heirloom Two, the second in a series of Heirloom Classics with Wendy. Thank you. Every technician will tell you that the correct tool is most important for almost every job. So these are some of my favorites. I've brought with me today some embroidery threads. The first are the type that you're probably most familiar with. This is six-stranded embroidery cotton. It comes in many different colors. The next is Floche. Floche is only available from two companies. It's manufactured in Europe, but we can, we can find it widely in the United States. It only comes in one size. The next is cotton or broder or cotton or broder cotton. It is available in several different sizes, most specifically used for cut work. The next is silk. Silk embroidery thread is very similar to cotton and it is used in exactly the same way. Now over here you'll see different types of threads. These are uh, most commonly used on machine embroidery, but they also are used for hand. The first is just a cord. I use this on applique cord and things like that, but it can also be sewn into the fabric. The next, these I use for pull thread stitches, and we're gonna be talking about those today. And not li lastly, but not least, embroidery needles. Make sure your needles are, are the highest quality. Now, also I brought some tools. Now these tools you're probably going to know all about. The first are scissors. Make sure that your scissors are of the highest quality. Make sure that they have nice points and they cut well. These two different types are used mainly for basic embroidery and this one is for cut work. Notice it has a small little blade, a tiny blade with a point and a little curved bill. Now, pins. Use the best pins you can afford. Glass head or silk types of, of pins are sure not to spoil your beautiful fabric. Every project needs magnification, no matter how old you are. The, be the better or the more powerful, the better it will be in the outcome. Now, pens on pencils. I like to use blue fabric markers. Uh, they wash out very well and they're easy to use, except that sometimes the points are not fine enough. I've been using this pen, which is actually an art pen. It has a very fine point and a darker color. However, it is more difficult to remove. This type of pencil is a chalk-based pencil, and it's good for almost any fabric. It does, however, tend to dissipate as you use it so you need to keep reapplying it. And here everyone will recognize a number two lead. I like this pen a lot and use it quite often. Now over here you'll see a screwdriver. Now I'm sure you're wondering why I would need a screwdriver and I'll explain that a little bit later. This can be found at any hardware store or you can borrow it from your husband. Now, um, a thimble, I have gotten used to using a thimble. It has protected my fingers, and um, I won't sew without one now. You need to find one that actually fits in order to, for it to be comfortable. The next thing is called a finger shield. This is for working without a hoop. I like to use these over the, my forefinger as I'm sewing, and it protects my finger from being um, stuck. 
for lack of a better term. This little instrument is called a stiletto or an awl. This is for making eyelets and pulling out stitches that you no longer need. And then lastly, I have an embroidery hoop. Now this type of hoop is very common and easily found. And I use this one when I wanna use, uh, work on handheld embroideries. Now last of all, I brought with me this uh, this embroidery, this wooden embroidery hoop that is on a stand. This hoop is very useful for stitching with when you need two hands. It holds the embroidery in place and the frame is designed for you to sit on so it is securely planted where you want it to be. So the last thing I want to talk about is I'm going to go back to these embroidery threads and when choosing your colors, if you could just put all of your colors together and look down at it, you can tell which thread is really does not belong in this group. So this thread would be removed so that the rest of the threads would be a nice pleasant blend. And that's how I do it. So now let's move on.